right guys welcome back to another m creator lore video so today what we're going to be covering is basically getting the um prairie dog that we've been working on the last couple episodes there has been a few different changes that i needed to do i actually went ahead and tried testing this beforehand though it was mainly because there was some troubles with the thing i just wanted to get the recording done and then it was just like already had some experience of setting it up but there was a few errors and stuff so the changes that i made was i separated the two models for the prairie dog into their own java entities so uh this is not going to make any real difference when we actually add it to m creator it's just making sure that the the states are separate we're doing this for a couple reasons but it's mostly to make it a little bit more easier to uh, set up for the texture and stuff like that. So I have those separate. I also fix the pivot points um, But other than that, it's pretty much the same thing. So I needed to import the, um, the actual models for the entities and set up the rotations uh, I needed to set up the leg rotations and the actual head rotations for the normal version which um, I'm just basically alternating the feet when they're walking this gives it a little more of a realistic uh, walking appearance for entities that kind of crawl and stuff so I saved that one and then the other one that I needed to do was the other state when it's actually looking around and this one I'm just going to set up the head rotation because there isn't really any purpose for it to actually wander around in that particular state. So uh, once I've done that, I needed to go to the resources and I replaced the other texture uh, with an empty texture so we can basically um, disable something. This will make a little bit more sense in just a second. But So I needed to give it a name and I'm basically calling it Prairie Dog. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically set our default model and I'm going to assign it a empty texture. At the moment, uh, what happens if we actually set the, the base model uh, is it will actually render it always. So I don't want it to do that. I don't know if it's a bug or not, a bug or not. so I'm not going to try fiddling around with it. I spend enough time trying to actually figure out how to not have it render all the time even with the other conditions and it wasn't working so I just basically I'm hiding the texture uh, which is, seems to work just fine that way. So I was setting up the egg cutter for the thing and I'm putting it under the resources tab for now. Uh, we might add a thing later on. So I needed to set up the actual uh, entity states which uh, I needed the textures for the base model uh, for the normal and the standing one and then I link those and for the other things I'm just setting up the noise for the entity this allows me to kind of mimic the um, rabbit sounds which I think will be best fit for this particular entity type and then what we're doing is we're going to set up some um, system variable or entity variables these are built into the um, entity itself so they run on I think both server or on server side so we're going to set one for the state and what we're going to do is call this one animation and then animation time animation time is going to be how long the animation is going to be counting down for and the animation time default is going to be how long the animation will take between switching between the two we also want to disable the inventory and I'm going to tweak the AI procedure a little bit just so we have a little bit more functionality with this particular entity. So I'm going to make it panic when attacked and then I'm going to make it look at the entity. We're going to be setting up triggers for these later on for uh, linking it in with the, the uh, actual states that we have. But for now we're just going to set them up uh, like this. And then we're going to come back to them and add the procedure for the condition later on. But uh, for now, that will do. Uh, we're going to disable generation because I have an idea for this later on, uh, which we'll cover in probably the next episode. But uh, right now, we, we don't really need it. So the next thing I needed to do was set up the save the entity and then basically go ahead and set up the um, 
entity state conditions. So I needed to go all the way down to the bottom and select the entity state selector. So, or the variable thing. Uh, this is basically built, built in for selecting the uh, variables that are assigned to the entity. And I needed to set the entity for the state. So the one that I want it to basically display. This one will be for the um, standing version of it. And the other one is for the normal version. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and save both of those. And then we can go to the triggers tab and we're going to do an instance for when the entity is first generated and we're going to go ahead and create a local variable and this will allow us to assign a random number if we add more states then we can use this uh, later on uh, but right now I don't plan on adding any more states I'm going to set this value between 0 and 1 and it's going to be a 1 or a 0 when it, we run this uh, particular uh, condition I'm going to test if it's zero and then if it is then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the entity state for, or the the variable for the entity to um, normal and if it is uh, one then I'm going to have it standing and then I need to set the time for the entity uh, the animation time to uh, we're going to set this to the default animation time actually because then that way we can um, have it set always because this is going to run when the entity is first generated so we want to make sure that the time is all set up for that part all right and then I'm just going to add some notes here so I know what everything does and then we can move on to the next part so basically again uh, the first part what we're doing is we're basically making the variable uh, set the time and then we're going to randomize the um, actual state of the entity when they're first spawned so it will either be a standing entity or a um, normal entity in a crawling position so the other one that we need is the update tick which we're going to go ahead and increase that time for the, or decrease the time pardon me uh, for the entity variable so we want to go ahead and test if the value is greater than zero and then that way we can basically decrease the time until it reaches <clears throat> until it reaches zero and then what we'll do is we're going to basically go ahead and um, just basically reset the time and update the state so in the case that it is um, at zero what we're going to do is we're going to set the default time again and then what we're going to do is go ahead and set up the entity state so we need to test what kind of state it's already in and we're going to go ahead and assign that state that it isn't in so in this case our animation should be um, I, I think that's the standing version and then the normal version should be the alternative and then we're going to test if the entity is in the standing or the normal version of the animation so we're just going to copy that over so basically it'll swap between the two states in general uh, the next thing that I want to do is when it gets hurt I want it to basically go into the normal state so it can run away so we're going to basically set up the standing we're testing if it's standing and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the animation so this is the variable that we assign to it and then we're going to make sure that that animation is set to normal so basically this will allow us to make sure the entity goes into the running state when it's uh, hurt when it's actually standing so and then we're also going to reset the timer uh, so it will be set up for the default amount so we can basically go ahead and add some notes and stuff too just so I remember what everything is for and Basically, this will allow it to switch to the state when the entity is uh, harmed. And then it will know, okay, then I can basically run. Because we're going to be running certain conditions through the AI uh, tasks list to control what it does. And I don't want it to run away when it's basically standing because that look kind of weird. So... Uh, we're going to just basically name a few other things that we worked on for the update tick and then we can move on to uh, the next part which is uh, setting up the conditions for the um, 
I believe it's the conditions for the uh, AI tasks, and then we'll be setting up the AI tasks as well. So, um, yeah, so I'm just adding notes, just keeping track of what all these little procedures and stuff do. This will not only make it easier for people using the project uh, workspace, but it will allow me to know what everything is for as well, so I don't get lost. All right, so to the AI tasks, uh, what we need to do, we can not actually just add um, a task list to this. So we need to create one from scratch. So we're going to create a procedure and we're going to go ahead and um, helps if I actually create a procedure. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna call it uh, Prairie Dog and then we're going to go with um, AI tasks or something like that for the one that we're going to be working with. I had to come up with a name that was actually going to be um, relevant to what we're going to be working with. So I needed to do AI and then wandering. And then I think I just said um, condition after that. And basically what that will allow us to know is this is for the AI conditions and stuff like that. So I was just playing with the wording, just seeing how it would look. And what, what I did was I duplicated the uh, condition for the uh, states. So I could basically just go ahead and copy this over and I'm testing if it is normal. And then the other state, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to test uh, for uh, when it is standing. So um, what I need to do is basically for the look looking condition. And this one should be set to standing. So standing and it'll be for when the entity should be looking around. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna panic when attacked. Um, for this, what I'm going to actually set is the wandering one, and I'm gonna set the start condition. Now I did notice some animation problems when they were um, set up, so I might wanna set the continue um, one, which is basically based on the other one. So we might have to tweak that a little bit, but the other ones I set up the AI conditioning for wandering and the look directions I have set up to make it look um, look around. So this is the entity. Uh, he's currently in the looking position and you can kind of hear the rabbit sounds in the background as well. So, but there it's just kind of looking around it takes a few seconds for it to switch states but once it does it will he'll go into the bottom state like that and then he'll be able to wander around um we'll see if he can actually wander around on his own and just keep an eye on him let's see what what he does Sometimes I have noticed that they don't uh, always switch, um, start wandering for a little period of time. So as you can see, he starts wandering in that particular state and then he might turn back into the other state pretty soon and um, go ahead and kind of meerkat. And this is what I meant with the condi continue condition. It might have a small problem with the actual walking animation, like for the wandering. So I'll have to play around with the conditions a little bit see if I can't get it working off camera and then do an update in the next episode. But uh, it's really rare when it, that actually happens through my testing and stuff like that. But outside of that, that's basically how you can do animations and stuff like that with uh, the entity states. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.